Right now, we are being joined by one of the, if not the biggest stars in mixed martial, martial arts today, Strike Force Women's Bantamweight Champion, Rowdy Ronda Rowdy. Ronda, welcome to BJPen.com Radio. You're on the line with Mitch Ciccarelli and Brian Levick. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm actually. I was dead asleep. I, I totally forgot about this. <laughs> I'm, both here. I'm on my couch right now. <laughs> What's awesome. Up? I love it. <laughs> you know I was watching. I was watching the documentary on gravity and put me to sleep. I'm sorry. I was actually staying up. <laughs> oh <guys>. God! <laughs> you're, you're, uh, you're. I guess uh, now. Who's Geneva? Is she your PR rep or she's part yeah. of your management team? Yeah, she's she's just helps me out a lot. Yeah, she just uh, she's texting me. She's like she's calling right now. <laughs> but uh, you know, we definitely appreciate it. taking the time to call in. Um, you know, we're, we're both big fans of yours. I mean, you're definitely taking uh, not only women's mixed martial arts by storm, but the sport as a whole. Um, you're bringing a lot of positive attention, uh, both, you know, inside the cage and outside the cage. Um, just wanted to, first off, congratulate you on all the nominations you got for Fighters Only. Um, you know, I know you get the Women's Fighter of the Year, and, and there was a few other ones. Uh First off, I just wanted to ask you uh, what you've been up to since uh, we last saw you against Sarah Kaufman in August. Um, you know, just training and running around and doing the same kind of stuff. I mean, I've been training a lot, actually. I got a whole month at home straight, which I yeah, usually don't get much time because especially right after fights, they, they flew me all over the place for a while. So I got all of last month free to just stay at home and work on stuff. But usually when you're, you're training for a fight, you're... You're training for a specific person, you know what I mean? And you yeah. don't have that much time to work on yourself. You're working on something for them. So uh, we get to do, like, a lot of more fun things that, and just train them just to do it, just to do it, and not just for a specific person. I don't know. It's hard to it. I just woke up. That was going to be a hard time. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take your time. I mean, get, get your wits about you. You know, if you want to grab a cup of coffee, I don't know if you're a coffee drinker. <laughs> Actually... I'm too much of a coffee drinker. That's my problem. I gotta get up and train again. I should get some coffee. I've never drank a full cup of coffee. I've tried it a couple of times and just never got into it. What? Yeah, I get crazy. Yeah. Crazy dog. I don't want to hear that's blasphemy. I drink twenty cups a day, so I don't know what this guy's talking about. Oh, that's horrible. <laughs> You know, we were just actually talking about before you, you called, uh, you know, about your last fight with Kaufman and and uh, just how, you know, Kaufman is, is a great fighter. She's been in there with some of the best. And and the just the way the fight ended, I mean, 54 seconds and, and the fight was over. Were, were you surprised at, at how quickly the fight ended? Me? No. I mean, I was trying to end it as quickly as possible. Uh, I wasn't surprised. I I, I thought I, I I I kind of expected it would be a little bit different than the other fights because she was such an accomplished striker. But um, for some reason, like right before the I went out there to fight, like they were playing like with the interviews and stuff that they do, and uh, like she was saying all this stuff about my striking. And my striking coach would grab me by like the back of the head. I probably went out there, and he was like. Don't let her touch you, don't let her do. Like, I can so tired of all these people saying all this stuff about just striking, and, like, she's not going to lay out how, like, she's like, I don't know if I can swear on this, but she's yeah, not laying out hands to me, that's pretty much what she said. And so, at that moment, I was very convinced that I was going to end it right away. But, um, I don't know, it's just one of those days, I guess, it just it feels like just the way it's just supposed to go, I don't know. You got free reign on this show, you can say whatever you, whatever you like. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm the only one censored. <laughs> We've had Phil okay, Maloney on here, if that tells you anything. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Rhonda, you know, first thing I want to ask you, um, what was the name of the documentary you were watching that puts you to sleep? Because I don't think I'm going to get any sleep tonight, so maybe I can I can watch that and it'll, it'll uh, put me to sleep right away. <laughs> uh, it's on me right now. It's the Science Channel. I'm sure it's like the universe or something, you know? <laughs> something like one of those. Oh. Awesome. Well, I, 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 no, I think it's the uh, universe, actually. Awesome. That, that definitely sounds boring enough for me to sleep. We'll see. Um, a couple weeks ago, we had Liz Carmucci on our show. And, you know, she was supposed to fight Sarah McMahon. You know, unfortunately, Sarah uh, fell out with an injury. 
Um, she told something that she's really pushing for a fight with you. She really wants that fight. Uh, and she did it in a really respectful way. You know, she didn't say anything negative. She was just like, you know, I want to be in there with the best, and I want to fight Ronda Rousey. I was wondering what would, what you thought about, you know, the, the potential of fighting Carmouche, because obviously, you know, she's a very tough opponent. Um, is that something you'd be uh, interested in your next fight? Yeah, I'd definitely be interested in it. I mean, every, everybody knows that the fight that I want the most, but I would I definitely respect Liz very much as a fighter, and, you know, she seems like a very cool chick to me. And I'm down to fight, of course, anybody. But um, my number one pick would be Cyborg next at 135, but yeah, I'll fight whoever they throw my way, man. It's pretty much a job. So, yeah, absolutely. You know, yeah, we were we were just talking about that that potential cyborg fight. I, I think that could be the main event of a UFC pay per view, you know, if not co main event, and then people will tune in because you know, like I said, I mean, you're one of the top stars in MMA right now. It's funny, I was at a wedding a couple months ago, and uh, there was this guy. He, he's also like a sports journalist, but he doesn't really follow MMA at all. And you know, I told him what I do with MMA, and he's like, you know what? There's one fighter that I do know of, and I, I covered her in the Olympics. It's Ronda Rousey, and he starts going on and on. And, I thought that was hilarious, and, but awesome at the same time. And it just goes to show you, you know, how far women's MMA has come. Um, so, you know, w- with that being said, how how uh, how big do you think it'll be when you when you do officially become that first female fighter to step foot in the UFC octagon? Uh, I have not answered that question at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not answering that question at all, man. Um, next. <laughs> no, it's just Sorry, moving bro. on. If, I'm sorry, if, you know what I mean? Like, I thought that any, if it was going to be said, it's not going to be said. Uh, moving on, you know, you, you, you went strike for us now, and, uh, you know, they've had their last two events canceled. Um just wanted to get your opinion. Do you feel that Strike Force is, is is on its last days, and and if so, you know how big of a blow to to not only mixed martial arts but to women's mixed martial arts is that if they do happen to to fold? Um, I don't know what it kind of effect it if it theoretically did it would have on women's MMA. I think it depends on you know if women's MMA would go down with Strike Force if it would be picked up course by a bigger promotion but um i don't know it depends on what happens and um this is all hypothetical so who knows i'll answer i don't know i don't know <laughs> next one <laughs> and what what are your thoughts on on Invicta and and their future have you seen any of their cards um, oh, i love Invicta. i think they're awesome I, i've watched all their cards so far all of two or three i think there's been two or three so far and um, I think it's perfect. I think the women need, and like, I think it's good for them to have a promotion that's just the women because they need a lot of those fights to be happening for these other girls just to build up records. You know what I mean? And for having a promotion that has all girls, it kind of speeds up that process. And having you know a bunch of cars all over the place that has one or two girl fights in there, they have like a bunch of them, you know, being the focus of the night. It kind of gets a lot of their names out there really fast. And um, it gets a lot of these girls fighting regularly because a lot of the time, like, before all this stuff really started picking up for me, it was really, really hard to find fights and to find, you know, girls to fight you. And it was just, like, it, it, it's great that they're, this is already set in place to help these girls out because it's very difficult without people specifically trying to, you know, get you fights. Absolutely. You know, I'm a big advocate of Invicta. I think what they're doing is phenomenal. And they're really showing that, you know, that, that there's so many different divisions that you can form, you know, male or female. That's been one of the criticisms you've heard a lot of people saying, you know, like, there's not enough girls to form a division. And I'm like, really? Like, there's just so many talented female fighters out there. Um, would you, what, what would you think about the possibility of, you know, the, maybe the UFC and Invicta kind of coming together and maybe the Invicta being like the official, um, you know, women's side of, of uh, you know, the UFC? Well, like I'm saying, Invicta makes a great, like, kind of like a theater program to any promotion, uh, regardless of who it is. But um, I don't know. What oh, was that the question? I think it's awesome. I don't know. What else do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just wondering, you know, what would you think about maybe, you know, the UFC and, and Invicta kind of 
partnering up. You know, I know Dana White's a big, uh, big supporter of Shannon Knapp, you know, because obviously they've worked together before. Uh, so I think they could do some pretty cool things, you know, if they came together. Yeah, and when, I think when a lot of people talk about the lack of depth in the MMA, I think they mean the the lack of fighters that people know. You know, yeah. a lot of girls are good, but there's not a lot of girls, girls people know are good, and they per- perceive that as lack of depth. And it's a lack of perceived depth, and I think that the, having Invicta around is the fastest way that we can kind of stop that, you know what I mean, and get people to know, yes, there are other girl fighters, yes, they are very good, and if you want to see them, turn to Invicta, you know what I mean? And if the UFC could probably, you know, help promote Invicta, that would actually help everybody, I think. But it's up to them if they decide to, like, you know, co-promote and stuff. So just uh, when, when you're not training and, and not preparing for a fight, what are the, some of the things you like to do, you know, outside of that has nothing to do with mixed martial arts, nothing to do with training? Um, you know, I know you live over, you know, California. Are you, a, you know, big on the beach, a surfer? What kind of things keep you occupied when you're not fighting? You hit the nail on the head. It's probably the reason I'm so tired is uh, I went surfing this morning at like 6 a.m. And um, Ben went to strength conditioning afterward and took a nap around going to grappling. But I don't know. I just You can't really have a bad day. That would be like an after an hour waking up and you're looking at a seal. Or, you know, I had like a pocket pelican inside of my head today and I saw a seal. And I was like, you know what? This is really cool. And it just starts you off on the, you know, a good start instead of just rolling out of bed and going straight to, just, you know, lifting weights, or you're just kind of, oh, I have to go, I have to go to bed, I have to go this way. It's like, it kind of buffers you between the rest of your day. You do something really, really cool right when you wake up and the rest of your day, it's kind of like easy. You know what I mean? So I, I try to go to the beach almost every day if, if, if possible, it's like therapeutic or something. Now, are you uh, a big fan of, of, you know, watching the fights, you know, not that you're not involved in? Or, like, would you, will you be attending uh, UFC 154? Do you have an interest in... And and those fights. Yeah, I love I love watching fights. You know, I've I've been so many this year. I I, I can't even tell you. Um, and pretty much it was the only reason why I got cable so I could watch the universe <laughs> in fights. So <laughs> I, I watch them a lot of free time. It's not like I'm gonna sit around and watch like Jersey Shore or something. You know, I like, come. Oh on, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm a nerd, man. I'm a fight nerd. I'm always on it. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I, uh, a lot better I watching the, the reality. So, on. <laughs> so what, what, what are your thoughts on, uh, you know, we got George St. Pierre coming back after, uh, you know, over a year on the shelf. Um, who do you, you think is going to win that fight? I don't know, man. Uh... Uh, you know, I'm such on so much Team Diaz, I'm kind of like, I don't care. Like, I'm still pouting, you know what I mean? Like, I, I really don't care. <laughs> I don't care, man. I think it's actually good to be a very entertaining fight, but I'm, I'm not picking sides for that one. But um, it'll be interesting to see GSP fight after so long off. And it'll be interesting seeing uh, Carlos trying to pull out a really big for- performance to redeem himself, you know? So I think both of them are under a lot of pressure to have a very exciting fight this time around and maybe... It will be, hopefully. So, yeah, that, that whole event, that whole event's going to be outstanding, you know, top to bottom. Uh, I wanted to ask you your thoughts you know, on the on the possibility of if there's a lot of people that keep talking about they want to see, you know, more more martial arts disciplines in the Olympics. You know, I know they have you know judo, taekwondo, boxing, wrestling. A lot of people are talking about they want to add jiu-jitsu to it. You know, some people are saying they want to see it. MMA as a whole, you know, become an Olympic sport. I wanted to get your thoughts on that, and if that you know you think that'd be a possibility in the future. Yeah, I think it would be really cool to have jiu-jitsu in the Olympics. And plus, like, judo, judo I mean, uh, tournament jiu-jitsu is kind of, like, turning into its own separate thing, too. You know what I mean? Like, the kind of jiu-jitsu that you see people doing in tournaments is starting to become specialized into its own, like, sport niche. And I think it's developed enough where it could be, I think it could genuinely hold its own to the Olympics. I mean, they have a bunch of events at the Olympics, so it's kind of like, uh-huh. You know what I mean? Like, the, I was, yeah. a guy from Ireland convinced me he was on the Frisbee team once. Well, I was in my first Olympics. I was 17, walking around all like, do to do. I'm from Ireland. I'm on the Frisbee team. And I was like, really? The Frisbee's like, oh, yeah, the day. And I'm like, oh, wow. You know what I mean? And someone said, hey, this is, I'm on the Jiu-Jitsu team. It sounds believable to me, right? So, oh, yeah. I'm for Jiu-Jitsu in the Olympics. I think it'd be awesome. <laughs> 
So what are, what are some, like, cool hobbies you do, you know, when you're not, you know, snapping arms and then whipping ass? I mean, it, anything that maybe fans wouldn't know about you? Uh, like, I guess I was there this morning. I was skateboarding. I go skateboarding a lot now. It's kind of like my new little bag I'm into. Well, so could, I call it reverse surfing because you start in the, on the shore and you go into the water. And it's good for, like, you know, I just hate putting wetsuits on. You know what I mean? Like a cold wetsuit on the side of the freeway getting changed. It's just, like, so uncomfortable and skimboarding. And you have to go in the water. And um, so that's one thing I've really been into lately. But I took it out the other day after I... Um, at the beach I wasn't used to, and I realized it was, like, kind of getting darker, and there's all these rocks, and I just scratched all of it up, so I went and I'm actually ordering my first, like, really, really good one that's coming in, so I'll actually start doing more, like, trick stuff, which I'm really stoked about doing skimboarding, but that's pretty much it, man. Like, I do so much all the time, all, the time, all day long. It's just in my free time. I just want to sit on my couch and, and, and watch the universe. That's pretty much it. Like, I, I'm just tired. <laughs> Like my, my my actual work life is so cool and so exhausting that my free time life is just pretty much lame and sitting down a lot of the time. I love it. But I wanted to, you know, I, I watched you when you were on uh, Conan O'Brien, and you know, it was a you know, re- very interesting performance. And I think it's great that you know, not only to get mixed martial arts that that attention to get onto a show like that, but just you know, seeing you, you know, all over the place. I mean, it seems like. You know, your, your pop, popularity is just surging more and more. Uh, how have you handled the all the intense, you know, pressure? Is it something that you you're prepared for, or is it, is it something that you know it took you a while to get used to? Um, I think I'm kind of lucky that I had kind of like a dry run of this before with judo. You know, I it, not to this extent, but when I was 16, I I think it was. Yeah, 2003, I was 16, and I competed in the seniors in judo for the first time in August. By that October, I was number one in the country, and by that June, I was on the Olympic team, and by that next August, I was, you know, in the in the Olympics. So it was just that kind of really quick progression of things is something, like, I, I kind of was able to handle before when I was younger, and now this is, like, magnified times, you know, a thousand, but I, I feel like I, it's... It's, um, I can handle it, you know, I, I, I feel like it's doable, you know, I think if, if I was just given all this all at once, that it would seem like an insurmountable amount of stuff to do and amount of people to attend to, and, you know, but um, I have a lot of help, and um, I'm kind of organizing kind of my own team around me for everybody to settle, uh, kind of handle their own stuff, I think the one thing that's the most stressful about anything is just scheduling and just juggling everything that needs to get done, and it's a good, good problem to have, but um, it, it sometimes it's like I'm juggling on a unicycle, you know. It's just like so much stuff to get done all the time and balance. But we're 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 still pulling it off. Although the machine hasn't imploded yet. Well, Rhonda, I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's certainly been a, a pleasure talking to you, and you know we love watching you compete. We're anxious to see you get back in there and. Uh, just wanted to give you this opportunity to, you know, give anybody some shout outs. We thank some sponsors, you know, family members, trainers, coaches, managers, whatever. The floor is yours. Oh, oh, I don't know that much to say. Um, thank you, Gaspari. I guess you're my main sponsor. And man, I just don't know, man. I can't, I can't think of brands right now. <laughs> I have to say that. <laughs> but. Everybody else that pays me, thank you so much. You guys rock. My coaches, teammates, blah, blah, blah. Everyone's cool by me. <laughs> well, we appreciate the time, Rhonda. Thanks again for joining us, and uh, we hope you have a great night. Thank you, you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you for being impatient with me and, like, leaving all scramble brain and all that. <laughs> hey, it's all good. I'm like that every day. <laughs> yeah, it's just- this is pre-caffeine, Rhonda. It's not seen very often. Congratulations. This is caffeine radio. <laughs> it's a rare, rare occasion. All right. Have right, a great night. It's exciting. 